ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم زين للناس حب الشهوات من النساء والبنين والقناطير المقنطرة والقناطير المقنطرة من الذهب والفضة والخيل المسومة والأنعام والحرف ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا والله عنده حسن المآب قل أأنبئكم بخير من ذلكم للذين اتقوا عند ربهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها وأزواج مطهرة ورضوان من الله والله بصير بالعباد. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has led us this far. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to accept all our deeds from us as a land of Ibadah. We are on with the continuation of our programs, the ongoing. Online, the 26th national edition of National Alumni Training Forum. We have with me here this today our doctor in the house, Dr. Safaran Omotokwe Adeniyi, or Dr. Adeni Omotokwe Zafaran. We used to call him Dr. Safaran for short. Inshallah, he's chairman, management board, Vanguard Academy. He's an author of over 45 books and lots of books that we all have read one, at one point or in time. Inshallah, I'll be taking us through the role of home in combating the menace. Oju Sheile, Latile Kokwa, Latile Kodi, Ugodiontiowa, and Yorili Agbaye. Like we've been retracing all through the program, the theme for this year is Menace in the World, Muslim Sisters on Call. And this is one of the lectures too that is going to drive home the point of the theme for the program. So, Inshallah, I'll hand over to the doctor in the house. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. وصلوات الله على رسول الله بعد فسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. We give thanks to Allah in His Majesty for granting us the opportunity to meet at this point in time. الحمد لله. Allah in His glorious Quran gives us the only methods or means by which minds can be reformed or changed. And that method is tethkir. Allah says for that kir. So tethkir here means a kind of interaction with the soul through admonition. So today, inshallah, we are looking at a very important topic, which is the role of the home in, compa in combating the menace. Before now, of course, all of us will have been conversing with what menaces are in terms of the happenings around us, society, which most often than not affects us in our homes, in our streets, and almost all over the places. Today, there's hardly a place that is 100% peaceful. Every point of human endeavor today, there's a problem one way or the other. The human heart has several problems. Our homes have several problems. Our streets, our community, our nation, all have different problems, which of course we highlight few of them. But in addressing this very important topic, we shall look at the keywords, which are the home and many. And second, we want to understand the concept of home in the Islamic perspective. And thirdly, we now try to highlight the menace, the effect, and how it affects the family. After which, we look at our homes today, then we look at the consequences, then the roles expected of every home to combat the menace. When we say menace, it is something or somebody, it could be something, it could be somebody that causes harm 
injury to the society, to individual, to a family, to a child, to a group of people. That's a, that's a menace. So it can cause harm to any of these people, either through their actions or through their attitudes. It could be emotional imbalance, it could be physical injury. So a menace, something dangerous that will affect people. This is in one angle what menace could be defined to be. But when I say home, what comes to the mind is where we live, where we stay. Because society is a, is, a, is a function of the kind of home we have. And of course, like society could be big in the outer world, but every bigger society returns to a home. And inside the home, we have the father, you have the mother, you have the children, you have other members of the family. But there are some key things we have to understand when we talk of home in the Islamic perspective, or sociological context too. The first point is that every village, because we are talking of combating the menace, the menace did not start in society, it starts from the home. So if it, it started from the home, the home is the first point of change. So if homes don't change, you can never tackle the menace outside the home. If you do that, it will be a temporary arrangement, and that will bring, bring us back to square one. So every village, every town, every nation, every school, every workplace is made from a home. It's from the home, you have villages, you have towns, you get to offices, you get to schools. So every child in a school comes from a home. Every person in the office, the manager, the CEO, comes from a home. So that is why home is very, very important. To go to work, you start from your home. So the psychology you take out from your home, the emotions or feelings may affect what happens in the office. If in the home you are going out with the mindset that you want to go and steal, you want to go and embezzle, you want to go and siphon, definitely it will call a, a kind of a, a menace in society through your, uh, that determination. Number two, every child belongs to a home. So no homeless child. No child that has no home. Society makes them not to have a place to rest. It's a different when you say homeless child, it means it has, no, every child has a home. It's not true that there's a homeless child. We can say a child has no place to place himself by way of physical arrangement. But every child has a home. And number three is that when a child is growing up, is the home that must provide a physical development through the kind of food they offer, they give to the child, the kind of shelter, the kind of, you know, uh, clothing, the kind of security. So it's the home that must provide all this along with spiritual or religious, you know, orientation. The home gives that one better than any other unit of society. Number four is that our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu told us that Kullu mawludin yuladu ala that every child is born to be natural, to have a feeling of being good, a feeling of security, a feeling of being nice, a feeling of kindness, a feeling of decency, of morality, of modesty. But for Abawa who you have with how you know how you know but the parents, by extension, the relatives, by extension, the family, by extension, society, tell them to what they become. So every child that is born is meant to be nice, is meant to be okay. But when the home fails in proper rearing, proper upbringing, the child now starts to grow wings of vices that will now become something terrible in the near future. So homes are springboards, they are barometers, they are foundations, they are fountains through which a nation is built. So if you want to illuminate the world, you want to guide the world, you want to have a peaceful, secure society, you just focus on the home because to have lights of guidance, lights of peace in society or the streets, you look at the home and you prepare the home. Also, 
what becomes of our home is what becomes of our teachers, of our children, of our wives and husbands. So we can say that what husband you see today outside there is made from a home. The kind of wife somebody marries is made from a home. The kind of reader we have today, whether it's a nice, good, kind, callous one, is the kind of the home he comes from. If the values, the principles have been properly inculcated in a leader, you will see it in him. In Nigeria today, for example, we have some, some leaders that you do, people will not call them, they will not pray for them. There are others that people are always aspiring to be like them because of their what? Attitudes and antecedents. Then, when you talk of home, you are talking of something like a nest of a bird. No matter how a bird goes out in a day to go and look for what to eat, it will always return to its nest. That is the, the, where the, the home of a bird. So, because the nest provides the warmth for the bird. So there's, for every man that goes out to the office, to the school, to work, to anywhere, he must return home. So the home must provide the warmth. In a case whereby a child doesn't want to go back home, or a husband or wife doesn't want to go back home, or the home is in disarray, then there's a big problem in that society. Then, in summary, as regards that, the home, as far as time is concerned, is a shield. This is a shield by way of war, being an armor to protect a child from psychological, social, moral, spiritual evils, menaces in society. It's equally a shade. We all know a shade, a big tree, a leafy tree, whereby if there is sun, you can still stay under it, you enjoy the breeze, you enjoy the wind. So the home is meant to be a shade where every child stays or every person stays. And of course, the home provides the shape of a society. So the home is a shield, it's a shield and it's a, it provides a shape. Still on the home because for us to actually see how the home must, the home must combat the menaces. So we're providing this very background. Also, the home determines how we make life decisions. A child in a home whereby parents don't take his opinion, they don't allow him to contribute, they don't, they don't study him, they don't allow his personality to develop, they're that kind of home, of course will affect that life decision on the child. So the home determines the kind of decision we make in the future. You will realize that before the generation, there were homes where children will cluster around their grandparents who will tell them tales, who will tell them stories about, at times stories, at times experiences. Children were willing to cluster around them. But the modern times, those grandparents are missing. Because the parents are missing. So they cluster around the screens. Either television, either the iPad, either the iPad, either tele, my, my, my phone and the, mobile phones and the like. So and that clustering is a machine cluster. It's not like the natural human cluster of an experienced, aged man or woman who will tell the story of the past, who will instill the values of the of society into the child. A home must be an environment where parents are seated and the children are there to interact with them to learn about society. Besides that also, according to Islamic scholars, Dr. Mustafa Sibai, one of his books, he mentioned that there's a tripartite angle to home. One is that a child comes from a home. A child goes to the mosque. A child goes to the school. Each of these units provides a level of education. The home provides the education of morals, of values, of principles, of the norms, of the cultures. They must provide the spiritual activation for the child, connecting the child with his Lord. The school provides intellectual base. But today, if we were we to extray our homes, do they provide the necessary moral education? Who are the providers? Who are the providers? Where are the mothers? Where are the fathers? 
That is one of the core reasons why the menaces are increasing. Second, the mosque that is to provide a spiritual angle. Where is the mosque? Who are the imams? Who are the members? What happens in the mosque? Is your education, is your orientation, is the, uh, you know, the, the training there, is it actually sustaining a child to be able to be spiritually active? And of course, the school. What kind of school do you have today? Who are the teachers? What are they teaching them? This clearly tell us where the problems are. And of course, in history of humanity, sociologically, in Surah, to, in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 1, Allah tells us that, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim, bismillah rahman rahim, Ya yuwa nasu, O you mankind, Ittaku rabbakum, fear your Lord, Alladhi khalaqakum min nafsu wahida, who created you from a single soul, and that single soul is Adam. And from Adam, Allah created the wife. So the first family in human history was that of Adam and Hawa. And you can see the world today is a reflection of that very single family. So that one was the first home where we can say husband and wife lived and had their children home values become societal values if a home teaches the child that don't be a liar don't tell lies be honest be decent dress well don't sit in the office that child carries it to the office so if every home let's say we have 10 homes now home a teaches the child don't be a thief don't this don't do this don't do bad things home b till the 10th homes if you all meet at the center they will not destroy society. But the case is that either the children or the child is not given the orientation of what to do at the center, then it grows up to become bad at the center. To the extent that to the out of the ten families now, about nine are, are in menaces that is causing havoc to society. Then the failure of the home, the lack of value on the home is affecting society today. Prophet Muhammad Sallam told us in one hadith shared by Abu Musa uh, in Sahih Muslim, he said, "Masa al Baiti levi yuda yudkaru Allah fi, wa levi yudkaru Allah fihi, masa al Hay wa al Mayy." He let us realize that the similitude of a home that has Allah, where Allah is the core is the core value of the home. And the one where Allah is not remembered is like the living and the dead. It's a very thought, you know, uh, inspiring message. That the home where Allah is remembered, the lessons that Allah creates us, we return to Allah, Allah will judge us, we are accountable to Allah, Allah does not want this. Where those things are clearly taught is a home that is a living home. Or a home that lacks that orientation, no Allah's remembrance, is a day, is a graveyard, is a cemetery. No, so not. today in the world, how many homes are not graveyards? You see, you don't need to wait till the grave or the kiyama before you suffer this thing. It's happening already. Many homes are in shambles. They are not in peace. Because the children they produce are causing them pain before they face the real pain before Allah. No, because not. they fail to do what they should do. And Allah has told us in the Quran, chapter 30, verse 41, that Zuhara al fasadu fil barri wal barri. Many seeds are spread in the land. Mischief are spread in the land. Because the makasabati aidinaz is a consequence of the handiworks of man in failing to build their home spiritually, religiously, you know, piously. And Allah says, who made them taste the fruit of their failure. Maybe, maybe they will repent and return to Allah. So that is the case of home in brave. So in Islam, the home is not just something you call you stumble over. There's a structure of home in Islam. It's a procedure whereby you start with good intention, the intention to build a home. You get married, which is half of religion. Prophet says, Man tazawwaja, Whoever marries has fulfilled half of the religion. And you can't joke with that because more than just marrying, 
It has to do with many things. So the, the, at times the home problem could start with the connection of the two parents. Maybe they are not properly connected by the Islamic procedure of marriage. It will be a home based on wrong footing. Because a home can't be built on our self-desires. It has to be based on the rules Allah has put in place for us. Marrying in the right way, doing it in the right way, and fulfilling the masuliya, the responsibility of the home, as a husband, as a wife, and as children. This one are what makes home in Islam. Today now in the world, society, we have several things happening, which may call the menaces. Like I told us, the menaces could be what? Something, happenings, cultures, Wolves or people causing harm to spiritual life, causing pain to moral life, causing disruption to social life, political life, economic life. So menaces can have different is is uh, is hydra headed and multi faceted. Among many others, for example, we have the case of um, uh, uh, case of Boko Haram. For example, is a menace. You want to ask why? It's an insecurity issue. But those in Boko Haram, are they human beings? Are they genes? Are they spirits? Mm -hmm. Are they causing us any pain? Are we safe? Are they killing people? Who are they? It's a menace. So who caused this menace? They were human beings. Where did they come from? They came from a home. Where they born, they were born. So it's a menace caused by the lack of what the values of the home. That's one angle to that. No matter their reason, in the name of religion, they are doing several terrible things. Number two, the Niger militants, the men and the like. What are they causing any problem? They damage the pipelines, they do many terrible things. That one too, what are they doing in the name of regional emancipation? They are causing pain to people. They disrupt economic what, uh, businesses. They, they, they fear uh, creating people's minds. And that one too is a, it's a menace because people are not secure. That one is an angle too. Another one could be child abuse. That of course is a serious issue. No matter the reason, either the culture of poverty, it does not justify child abuse. Child abuse in any form, either emotionally, physically, in any form where a child is not secured. That one is a kind of is a menace. In fact, the real menace is not, not worshiping Allah. You know, when, when they discuss many, they don't talk of spiritual or polytheism or shirk. They are many because when you don't know God, you can't know every other thing. It is said, I'm not sahu, I'm not When you know yourself that I'm nothing, I'm from Allah, I will die one day, you know, you know that there's God. Now you don't know God. It's a menace because when you don't know God, you do more evil than good. Not knowing God is the greatest menace in the world because you can't know God and misbehave. God that can take your life now with the next one second. God that can make anything happen. You now dare that God, you start doing many terrible things. You know? So that one is the menace in the spiritual realm too. Then, social media has become a terrible menace whereby children have turned social media, the platforms to their new parents. They now become local parents. The TV, the screens, the plasma screen, the iPad, the mobile phone, and with their different you know, windows, handles, angles, they now represent parents who are absent. They now, those who now act as parents, you know, uh, as their parents. So social media and the evils therein are causing havoc. So it's a kind of a menace in his, own, in his realm too. They also caught it in, it's a form of menace. Those who are doing it, they are human beings. Begging is a menace because if begging will make people to perpetually depending and when they can't get for her to get what they want, they can turn to anything. So beggars can become many in society because they can decide to become anything later. Many others exist. We have kidnapping, gang rape, drug pushing, agro push, arm robbery, even emotional imbalance, depression. Children today having depression. You know, all these are menaces which are consequent upon the failure of the home. Nudity is a menace because women going about society. They cause danger for men who have the voluptuous eyes and they cannot resist their control, their self desires. They start to run after them. Some will rape them. Some will fornicate with them. Some will become prostitutes and the like. So it's a menace from the moral angle because they, what they should have concealed, they don't conceal. 
for many factors, could be material reason, could be any other reason. They will have child prostitution with the pedophiles, those who molest children, out of wedlock pregnancy. They are all many. Because a child that is not properly born is the first thing that uh, the child affects the person. So, we can only see that children today are not safe from the, uh, the, 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 those who are, cost, who are molesting them. We call it the pedophile the, 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 uh, uh, angle. I mean, that's abortions, baby factories, divorce, domestic services. Yes, that's an angle. Most people don't think about domestic menace. Whereby you have drivers, you have nurses, you have some home attendants who take advantage of your absence or presence to leash, have work on your children or on the family. Some men's drivers become sex partner of their wives. Some drivers or some other uh, home lesson teachers become lovers of their children. You know, many should not be looked at from the physical angle alone. Then we have spiritual deficit. It's a menace. When people are lacking spirituality, they don't think God, they forget God. And of course, several sexual deviation. All these are some of the menaces we face today. We have explained to us, tried to explain what a menace is. We've tried to look at the Islamic concept of a home as a place of warmth like a nest. We have tried also to look at some examples of menaces and how the home contributes to those menaces. Now, our homes today, consequent upon these missing links, what do we suffer in our homes today? Several things we suffer. Before we now come to the roles the home must play. First is emotional imbalance. This goes on in several homes. Emotional imbalance and mental illnesses. Because wives go through depressions, some go through psychosis, children go through depressions, some through, go through frustrations, consequent upon what? Negligence and torture. Some children, the way they are dealt with by their mothers, you think they are dealing, you, we are in slave era. When you are beating, punishing your own child, not disciplining the child, some punish their child, children. So in the course of doing that, the children now suffer is a, a, kind of, a kind of background of violence mm -hmm. that will not have any peace at home. You will pray to run away from the home. So it's, it's, a disturb it's a disruption of the family, of the home. And the child is meant to go out and become a changer of the society. Now he's suffering insecurity through his own mm -hmm. parents. How much more now? Guardians or neighbors and the like. And wives, of course, through many dimensions, through divorce at times, or through hospitals, the wife now is not in peace. Men will shit on them and many other things like that. So the woman tends to go through several emotional challenges because she has to attend to the child, attend to the husband, attend to the home, and of course, we have equally imposed on them and they impose on themselves working outside the home, whereby she is now having multiple of challenges coming her way. This one is a reflection of our home today, which is affecting many things. Number two, our homes today also, they suffer from spiritual deficits. In many homes, they disconnect with God, whereby they, do, they feel God is not relevant in their life. The way they do things, some homes who claim Islam don't observe salat, and then mothers do, do, do not pray, the father is praying, father is not praying, the mother is praying, children are not praying, parents are praying. A home like that can be a model for humanity. It's a spiritual deficit. A home where they don't have time to create and have to, to create time for their creator. This one too, we see them in that early end. And our home today also, they go to social media invasion. They suffer social media invasion, whereby relationship has become like machine relationship. The husband is on the laptop. You have on the mobile phone, so you are on the iPad. So everybody's in his own, it is in the same parlor, the same room, the same sitting room. Each person is glued and engaged with the machine. So there's no that very body contact relationship again. There's no human feeling. We have machine feelings. The, one of the family members is in danger, trying to call attention of the other. 
go on. The part of the phone is holding, it can't give attention. To the extent that this one is causing a lot of problems in society today. And the, of course, what do you see again? We have time wasting. Everybody wastes time on the machine till, you know, uh, stillness of the night at the long run. No time for tahajud, no time for uh, that car, I mean, other slides. And there several distractions. Also, today our homes, we now have what we call local experiences. Whereby the TV now plays the role of the parents. Children watch TV to learn what is anti akhida Things they watch, especially the African magic and the like, they will be against the values of the deen. Mm. They watch them, and when you start, you start, start to watch something regularly, it starts to enter into subconscious, then to the conscious. You will not think that thing is real. Small thing like this is afraid, because he has been exposed to that through the TV, and they learn immoralities, they learn vulgarities, languages, they watch musicians who sing and not properly dress. They want to be like them. They want to see them as their mothers. It's our home today. Then we have divergent lens in our home. Where the father and the mother or husband and wife don't see things the same way. The mother says, let's go to this school for our child because of the moral development. I said, no, I won't stand that. Standard school. And standard school means that there's no Islam. There's no proper Islam. But there is environment, set of arms and everything. So it's a divergent lens. And that will affect the child because structure alone does not build a child. It's the moral angle that should always be given consideration. Then in our homes today, we have haram consumption, where people are not bothered again how they get their resources. Let's just enjoy life because we can't suffer. Poverty is not our portion. If the husband is coming home with thousands, millions, the wife will not even ask. He will pray, thank God, thank God, thank God. Even when the thank God is on evil. Mm. So the, some homes today, they go through that. Then, our homes today, there are more music in our homes and less of Quranic voice. And this one is a danger that has been caused by the menaces society has brought over us. Most homes today, there is no reading again. Father and children hardly sit down to read again. Everybody just busy and on like that. Then, there's a sedency of material quest. Everybody wants to pursue materialism. More cars, more lands, more businesses, more traveling abroad. At the expense of the soul. Some will just travel, they will leave the fate of the child. As the longer they suffer depression. They expose them to what they don't need to be exposed to. And this one affects them on the long run. Even homes have this unity. Where they have serious situation that... They will not even agree, and of course, we have baby mothers these days now, baby parents who are not prepared for it. All this and many more happens in our, in our homes. Then, how does the home combat these very menaces? There is the first one, which is what? Educational role. Every home must embark on educational projects for its, for its home. Because Islam believes that Ali Umu Madrasatun. The mother is his school. And the Sharia, based on the hadith of the Prophet that Kulukun Roi, the ayah in terms of shepherdship, that you are in charge, responsibility. The Sharia now places it that a man is in Masuliyatul in fact, he is the one to spend, he is the one to provide. For the wife, for the children, for the accommodation, for the shelter, is the husband. 100% there is no going outside that. And it says, for the wife, Masuliyatu, Terebiyatu li awladi, wa tedmi, wa tedbiri shu'un al The wife's job is to look at the affairs of the home. Mm. What are we eating? What are we consuming? What's the health situation? What are children learning from? Which school should they go? How are they brought up? Giving them attention. Focus that is 100%. You see today that the two are missing. Most fathers don't know their ability again. They leave their faith to their wives. And we have to have to struggle extra to make the ends meet at the expense of children's uh, training. So we need education as parents who are in charge of the home to see our responsibility as compulsory. And number two, to read books on parenting because when you don't know something, you don't know how to go about it. 
So they must read about parenting or go for training on parenting. And beside that again, they must prepare the children for this generation. Like said by Ali ibn Abi Talib, Alimu awladakum li zamanihim, fa innahu khulikul zamani gara zamanikum. Teach, prepare your children, train your children for their own time, their own generation. Because they are created for a time not like your own. Mm. You remember, there was a time in history some decades back, we even NTA that all of us know today, they only turn on by 4 o'clock yes. in the evening, stop yes. by 9 o'clock. Yes. You know, that was a generation. A generation whereby then mothers don't go anywhere, they are in charge of the home. As they are going to school, they, 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 they score the child to the doorstep. Oh, my child, don't fight in school. Though. They'll give them a, a parting message to go to school. When they come back in the afternoon, child will run, they will run home because they know the yeah, hot advice are waiting them. And as they come back, the mother will wake up call me, welcome, how was school today? She will inspect the dressing of the child. What happened? Your clothes is torn here. You know, what happened? Uh, if it's not learning to talk, maybe you fall somebody, go to the psychologist, they will know what happened. They will ask questions, they will get it. If it's a girl, the way she dressed, she will know. She went somewhere, something like that. They will know on time. First hand information. But the mothers of the modern times have no time. They are mm. not at home when, when they are going out. Come. They are not at home when they come back. So when you're talking about society problem today, we can't run away from that reality. So there's need for education whereby children will go to the right school. So home education is fundamental. No other person can give it. Send your school to any school is, is a level. The real home school is, is the home where the child must get some values from the home. That's the first role we must return to. Our children must be properly educated. In psychology today, they've carried out research on age by age development of a child. At age one, how should we have developed emotionally, psychologically, physically, mentally, educationally? They've, just, they've researched into how you should think at age two, age three, age four. Like, for example, children at times, you have children, boys, girls at home. You realize at times, age eight, eight, seven, nine, you have, at times, they always have quarrels at times among themselves. It's a psychological issue. You know? So, when you know that very one, you won't, you won't be so bothered and so just make little effort. Some against children may be bedwetting. There is a psychological issue on that very one. So, that most children are bedwet. If you check the history, maybe their fathers are bedwetting before too. Mm. So, you can't turn the giant. They will soon stop. Mm. There's a way you handle that very one too, in different ways. When a child is below 10, for example, he tends to look inward towards his own gender. He not look outside the gender. But when it's crossing 10, going to 11, he starts to look outside the gender. And when girls are 10 years, for example, they tend to, you know, they tend to be jealous of their friend. They, want, their friend, they don't want to drop their friends. 10, 11 years. You know, it's, why is it, why is it, because they love friendship. And one, technique, one psychological issue here is this. When a child is 10, 9, 11, and his friend rejects him, that rejection will affect the child later in life. Mm. It's going to affect him. So education is important to know what will be effect of some things on my child. A child, for example, while young, what kind of food should he take to assist his brain? A woman in pregnancy, what kind of food must he take to assist? Because the brain development is basically the first few months of the child. But when that child is not, there's no education to know the kind of diet, the kind of food for the child, then it will grow up to now start, you know, later in life, you will have lost it. You know, the child can't cope again because the brain has been damaged. Mm. Education is important as a rule. The child will properly develop physically, emotionally, morally for the future. Number two, the home, for the home to combat the menaces properly, we must revive the communal home front. By this one, Communal home front has to do with just beyond father and mother. Every child is our child. Mm. Every child is our child because so far we have, con we have contacted the person, we have met the person, we should make effort on the child because we can't tell who becomes what in the future. That is why in those days, small as your mother will meet you outside, when they see you fight or do something, they will summon you, they will punish you. If you not get to and tell your parents again, they will, they will increase the punishment for you. But these days, nobody wants to know. 
You come with a flashy car, you are annoyed, but hey, everybody is pressing you, even if you have stolen the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. But those they will ask come, they stop you, stop, ah. And they will say, how are you? They will, in, his, in a sarcastic manner, ah. <laughs> hey, uh. When they will talk, you, you, if I, you will be afraid before they will talk. They want to question how you got the money. But this day, you know, I don't have that one. Even the mother will come and say, hey, hey, my money, my wife work for his money. When she knew this, actually stole the money. Mm. So coming out on front, go a long way to assist us in our beginning of labor. Everybody wants to assist the child to get the right focus on what he does, what he does. So that is one. Number three is, our homes must be visionary and missionary. We can't treat our home like any other home. We are Islamic home, Muslim home. What are the values we must not toy with? A child must know the akida of we don't believe in talisman, we don't believe in shams, we don't believe in anything that is against you know chronic injunction. Then, with that very one, prepare their mind to be contented. Allah is the one that gives us Allah's 99 names. They build different values. Allah is Ali 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 Mu'izu. One that exalts people is the result, the one that provides. So we change the values of the children. So a child of 10 years, we're not talking of, I want to buy the, those, the best lessons and the like, and they will start talking about materialism. And they, we see a tiny children talk at times at the age of seven, eight, we're wondering. This children at that age, talking of how to become millionaire, to become billionaire. So the values will be in our child from that stage. Yes. To be contented with the little they have, but they must be working and struggling. That will save us from leaders who become thieves, who become saffron our resources. Number three or four is there must be effective communication in the home. Whereby the parents must communicate between themselves, then with their children. Communication is key. In the modern time, parents don't have time to communicate with their children. And that lack of communication has effect on children performance anxiety. A child must be able to talk to it, to discuss with his parents, must be able to share his feelings, especially the girls. That was a case of a girl whose mother had no time for. And the girl at the point did something, the mother had to punish her severely. She cried throughout the whole day. At the end of the day, the father came in the evening and saw the girl crying. What happened? I went to the wife that settled with her child. You know that thing with anger or sorrow like this. The mother went to the, the girl, okay, we settle tomorrow, sorry, they beg each other. When the mother said they will talk tomorrow, she left. The girl now wrote in her diary that the happiest moment in her life was that very moment. Uh -huh. That her mother said she would talk to her tomorrow. tomorrow. When it she was morning, for the day. when it was morning, they rose for prayers. They waited for her, she was not there. When they got to her room, she has died. Allah, Allah. You know? So, this modern times, most people take it for granted. There were several cases of people committing suicide going to depression because parents feel that they, they, are, they, are, they are well. They are not well. Wellness is not physical wellness. It's a, the, the greater one is emotional and spiritual wellness. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's greater than physical bigness or so-called health, whatever. So communication is important. We learn to communicate based on their age. Because how do you say, what do you call him? Talk to people based on the level of their you know, intelligence. Yes, Every child must be taught. For example, sex education is it is a menace that to solve pedophiles, people to solve sex abuse and the like. We need to prepare the girl child, even the boy child too, because they are equally abused in some contexts. Mm -hmm. They need to prepare their minds based on their age, age three, so you can train them to be sex education conscious. For example, taking your child that when you touch your body like this, come and report to mommy. Oh, you don't by play play. You don't come and tell mommy. Uh, it is it's not mother. You told my mom, mom. Uh -huh. Good, he's, he's getting the message. As she goes to age seven, and you add to the knowledge. Age ten, when she now tell people to sit down. It is not good at all. A girl entering, having her first menstrual experience, and she has not prepared her head. Mm. It has effect. If she's from the wrong hands, who will tutor her? So a mother should have prepared her child by age nine or so. Something like that happens, and she will have been prepared. She will have, she will have had it. When she now starts again, you have to sit her down as a Muslim. You are not a mokalafa. If he's a boy, the father will sit him down. He's not having his first wet dream. So father will not even know. Mm. They don't bother. They don't bother. These have effect on their moral life. Because they won't know how serious it is. But if you have sat the child down, now angels have opened a register for you. That one will prepare the child 
morally, not to become a fornicator or become an evil person. How many other points there? Then also, we need quality, consistent time investment for the home. Hmm. Today, we invest more outside the home. And that's one of the problems we face outside. So we need to create time consciously with the, with the home. The home must have a quality time to spend together, consciously. If just one, even if one, it should have been every day. If that's not possible, every two days. If that's possible, every three days. If not possible, four days. But come what may, at least once in a week, you must create quality time. That everybody must be, passive, must be active. Not just the mother, what do you want to say? No. Let everybody talk and you discuss together. It's very, very important. And of course, the home must play the role of, of effective monitoring. The father, the mother, everyone in the family must have that monitoring role, whereby you monitor what do they wash. So what they wash affects their thinking. Where do they go? Where they go affects the way they think about the home, comparing homes with the other homes. You send your children on holiday to a rich man's house, maybe your sister is uh, from America, they come back, he went there, he saw the way things were in the house, the environment, the shiny, the glittering. He comes home, you don't have, you don't have another carpet. You know? So, eh, you start to think. So, you, you are the cause of the problem. Because he will have had a different thought that you are, you are, you are the cause of his own poverty. Mm. So, you try to be very broad minded and arm for science for the child. So, that one is important. Then you want to show your neighbors. Some neighbors are, they are menaces in themselves. Your child must not just go there at all. No matter, you don't allow the child to come and give, visit me. Ni. <laughs> you are the one to defend the child. No, there's, there are some neighbors you don't need to hide your feelings. I'm sorry, my child. Don't let them know clear cause. Point blank. You know, it's very, 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 very important. Darren, too. And the other point is okay. now, the other point you want to emphasize as a rule of the home is spiritual rule. This is very, very powerful. Dua. In the Quran, you saw Ibrahim, Abraham not saw him. You saw Maryam, when she was praying to Allah, the kind of child, baby she wants, and what she should do. You saw several prayers in the Quran. So a home must have a load of prayers that will guide the child and the home. It's very, very important. And of course, spiritually too, Prophet said that Command your children to observe prayers when they are Seven. That one is giving us a spiritual role. And if a child can master salat with khushu, with humility and fear in Allah, it will solve many problems. Quran chapter 20, 20, Quran, uh, 29 verse 45, Allah says that, Inna salata, tanya Prayers make one to avoid what? Evils. These senses. It will purify the mind from all evils. So the home must play that role effectively. When we are going to pray, are they praying? When you are not out, you must set a way of making them pray consciously. Not just when you are around. It's, a, it's an effort you have to make. At the time you tell them, I'm, I'm going out to, you are not going out. You want to test them. You just be on the wash out. At the time you, know, you may plan it so that either husband and wife will have led, you will know that you are at home. You will have at home, you have gone out. You're not just, you won't say anything. They scatter the whole house, they do what? Don't say anything. Don't, that they, may not, that they, may, they may not even know you have done anything. You, you have been uh, uh -huh. watching it from behind the screen. Uh -huh. Can after a week, you know, to tell their truthfulness and honesty. What happened last week? Mommy, I will pray. You know, Mr. Salat. You call Azan. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. You go out for them. Ah, mommy, what's it now? Ah, my children. This is not good. You now come out emotionally. You see, Allah, I was at home. You did this. Okay. You did this. Ah, you did this. But that third one, it will create something in their minds. Not bring Allah. Allah, but I have seen you now. I must not even be around. They have to teach their honesty also, to test, to teach, to test their kindness. Some of them can, keep, can just keep money somewhere in the bed. Maybe they are twins, someone just take the money. You know the person who took the money. Say, who took that money? I'm not the one. I'm not the one. No. Hey, you know the one who took it. Eh? You know it for two days. You know it for this. You take lunch. You can get this, you can get this. If he's very kind, you will go and return that money. I mean, I've seen the money you take. <laughs> it's very kind. Not too, the heart is not hard. But we've been out threatening them. I'm, it was, I'm not the one. I'm not the one, mommy. I'm not the one. Ah, you have a, a big problem in your house. You don't know what to do to the child. But most of us don't, we don't bother testing our children to know whether they are stealing or they are periphery or the like. It's very important we know that very well. The psychological role. The home of the child emotionally. 
Children go to school, they don't have the preparations as they should have it. That one too, we have to play that role. You have to play more that role also. It's probably says, we are far away from your own mother. Even your own children should not sit together in the same room when they are male and female. So that means you have to play that very role as a, as a, you know, a, a moral role there. Then you must be a model, a model by all uh, means. In the Quran, Surah to the Kaab, but it is two. There's a verse there. What can a woman saw the hand? There were some parents in that verse who were not even alive, but because of their own righteousness, Allah gathered the children. Mm. Meaning, your own spirituality can equally help the children, children in words. In trying to conclude our talk for today, for the educational role also, use different methods at home. These days, talking like this, you don't can solve the problem for the children, modern mm. children. Mm. You need clips. You need images. Get just one clip, let them watch it, let them pass comments. Through it, you try to get how they are thinking. Clips makes you know the way they think, raise their mind for critical thinking, and so on and so forth. It's very, very important. Then, pay them of the models. You must tell a story with intellectualism. In conclusion, Prophet told us that Kulu Kunroi, you are all shepherds. That one is teaching us that we must know that we are responsible. The wife is responsible, other one is responsible. That is number one. Number two is that even to call him for, for concluding our talk today, said, Waktarul awladu in Namaja Fasaduhu min kibal aba. There are more students. Badness or evil starts from their parents, you know, when the parents neglect them and they don't teach them. So the home is a function of the parents. Mm. See, don't talk, talk complain about this predator is bad. No, look at your own house, at the children, what they should be. Let every home go back home and do the needful. We will see the society will change naturally. There is no amount of Money we spend, money orientation. If we don't invest in the home properly, we can't get anywhere. Because it's the barometer, is the foundation. We pray Allah guides all of us and provides our needs, make our home a peaceful one. May our own not be evidence against us in this one and in the world to come. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We say jazakum law khairan to our doctor in the house. Uh, stars. That is a very soul inspiring one, a very thought provoking one. I'm sure that we have all listened and we have learned one or two things. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to increase the knowledge of our speaker. And I used to write, I used to write that may Allah not let the ink of his pen get dry. Amen. Also, all his thoughts, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to purify them and make them beneficial for those people that will listen to all his talk. Amen. May we see more of them in our, our means us. And inshallah. I really learned a lot, uh, sincerely, and I'm sure our audience have gained one or two things immensely. And the home is just the foundation of society. If you want a good home, if you want a good society, check the home. And the home, the mother has a pivotal role to play. They say, Madrasat al umi Madrasat al ula that the mother is the first child, is the first school of a child. We should all endeavor to play our role. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make these children a source of joy for us. Um. And being Change to the world at large. I mean, Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah.